Hussain Bastani is with us in the studio. He's from the BBC's Persian Services. Hussain, great to have you uh, have you with us. Finally, I'm sure you're saying that, right? Finally, they've come to a deal. Let's start with, there's all, all sorts of things to talk about. Let's start with oil first, of course, a big possible revenue spinner. For a, an economy that's been losing up to $8 billion a month, once it gets the oil flowing again, I mean, this is, this is a windfall, right? This, is, this will revitalise the, the huge potential in that economy. Uh, yes, give, uh, let me give you two figures about, about the effect of s the sanctions. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, the spokesman of the Iranian administration said that uh, our oil revenue was about $120 billion in 2011, and now it is about $24 billion. Wow. It shows the, the extent of, of course, the whole story is not because of the, the, the international sanctions, because, uh, because the, the fall in the international oil prices has played a role in this as well. But the bigger part is because of international sanctions. And now we, Iran has about $120 billion of frozen assets in international banks. So when this money goes back to the country, mm. it, 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 it is good for, for, for the Iranian administration, but there are dangers as well. For example, this money can lead to a bigger inflation when the money is injected to the society and bigger corruption mm. because there will be a competition be with, uh, between among different uh, state-run institutions to absorb this money and to use this money. And we should understand that many of these state-run uh, uh, organizations are not controlled by the administration. For example, those who are under the direct control of the supreme leader. They do not report to the administration. Mm. And they may use this money even in the ways that are not in line with the government policies, mm. even, even against the, the government. Yeah, OK, so something to watch out. Can I just quickly get this in a very short program? Um, you know, you're talking about a country with, what, 80 million people. Nearly 50% of that population is something like under 35. I mean, I can only imagine the, you know, we, we've done technology stories on Iran, entrepreneur, you know, uh, entrepreneurial mindset i mean the potential though is, is enormous just yeah. briefly yeah the potential is enormous and and there are many fields that need investment it, mm. for example the, the iran's employment market has been seriously affected by international sanctions just one example is iran's gas industry mm. everybody knows about iran's oil industry but but iran's gas in industry needs investment and once it was believed that iran is the second biggest has the second biggest re gas. gas resources, but no, it is believed that it is the, f the biggest resources of gas in the world. And for many years, there has been no investment mm. in them. And they need thousands, tens of thousands of new workers, engineers, technicians, journalists, office uh, 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 staff, etc., etc. Yeah. And well, yeah. I don't, I, you know, some of the experts that, are, that I've been speaking to today believe that I don't think we're going to have any problem with that investment. Apparently, there are companies, outside companies, lining up, ready to, you know, ready to go in and invest in this potentially exactly. enormous economy. It, it's the case. Time exactly. Is short. Thank you, Hussein. We, we uh, appreciate that, Hussein.